I'm Tony Stark. I build neat stuff. I got a great girl. And occasionally, save the world. So why can't I sleep? Hello, everyone. I got a chance to see Iron Man 3 this weekend. And... I enjoyed the hell out of this film. This was a lot of fun. Uh, and thank God, because, you know, I've been looking forward to this pretty much ever since the day it was announced, and I've been hoping that it was not going to suck, because unfortunately, trilogies have a tendency to do that. Like, by the time they get to the third movie, either they've completely run out of ideas and are really just going through the motions because the studio wants them to, or they have too many ideas and are trying to cram them into one last movie just in one two-hour block and it just becomes an absolute mess. Uh, thankfully, neither was the case here. This was very well done. I liked it. Um, and I guess I should tell you what I thought of the first two movies very briefly. Uh, the first one I thought was awesome. Uh, it's probably, with the exception of The Avengers, my favorite movie in the... Marvel Cinematic Universe, or whatever they're calling it. Uh, I love the hell out of that movie. I liked uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. He really owned that role and made it his own, and he continues to do that to this day. Uh, I liked the villain. I thought the action was great. Uh, the development of the Iron Man suit and the origin story, I, I really liked it. Uh, the second one, it was okay. I still enjoyed it, but not nearly as much as the first. I thought it had a lot of issues, especially with the final battle, which I thought was over way too quickly. Kind of an anti-climax. Like, oh, we're surrounded by enemy soldiers. And now we're not. Well, we're done here. And that was it. It's like, it, I'm sure it was a bit longer than this, but it felt like it was about two minutes, and that was it. Uh, thankfully, they learned from their mistakes with this movie, because the final battle in Iron Man 3 is much, much better and cranks everything up to 11. I'm sure you've seen little bits of it in the trailer where basically uh, Tony Stark summons every single Iron Man suit he owns into that battle and is, uh, goes through the whole thing just constantly jumping from suit to suit. It looks awesome. It's very well shot. A uh, ton of fun to watch. Uh, I really like what Shane Black did with this movie as a director. He, uh, for the most part with the action, I don't think I noticed any shaky cam, if there was any at all. Uh, which a lot of action movies do nowadays, because people seem to have this idea that the action gets better if you hold the camera like you have Parkinson's. I'd, I am so going to hell for that joke, but oh. <laughs> but, uh, but, but no, he pretty much just points the camera and lets the action speak for itself. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Uh, now, as far as... Uh, th this movie did go undergo a post-conversion to 3D, and either Shane Black does not know how to shoot a 3D movie, or no one bothered to tell him it was going to be in 3D. And actually, given how long it took Marvel to announce that this movie was going to be converted to 3D, I'm more inclined to believe that's what happened. I think he was shooting it with the intention of it being a 2D movie from day one and just no one bothered to tell him, oh, by the way, this is going to be in 3D. And really, if you're going to make a 3D movie, shoot it in 3D. Just don't bother with some post-conversions. Now, granted, post-conversions have become much better in more recent years, but still, they are no substitute for the real thing, because there were some moments in this movie where you're looking at it through 3D glasses, but you're really just seeing a 2D shot. In fact, there were a couple of moments where I just, you know, flipped the glasses up for a second and saw very little blur at all. And there were also a few moments where the 3D perspective just looked off. Not entirely sure how to describe it, just something about the perspective, like some objects in the foreground looked closer than they should have been, uh, or looked like they may not have been there at all and were headed in post, uh, which may not have been the case, but that's how it looked. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to see this movie and you haven't already, which probably puts you in the minority, but if, if you are going to see it, see it in 2D, save your money, you're not missing anything. Promise you that. You are not missing anything. 
Uh, now, as far as the story goes for this movie, uh, Tony Stark basically has to go up against three bad guys in this one. Uh, the first one being the Mandarin, who I'm sure you've seen in all the trailers, played by Ben Kingsley and played very well. Uh, I guess if you ever need a villain, you call Ben Kingsley. <laughs> He's your guy. Uh, but yeah, this the tone of voice that he uses as the Mandarin. Very dark, very menacing, and you really get a feel for just how dangerous this guy is just when he speaks. Um, I mean, he is very well played, and also just through his actions throughout the film, you get a real sense of how dangerous this guy is and how far his reach can go. And even Tony Stark himself is not safe from him in the comfort of his own home. I'm sure you've seen that bit in the trailer where his house gets blown up, uh, which basically happens because at one point in the movie, he goes on national TV and says to the Mandarin, come at me, bro. And boy, does he ever. Oh, that, you know what, com compared to this and that bit in the Avengers where Loki comes into Stark Tower, Tony, just stop inviting the villains into your own personal space. Just you know, keep... Keep the battle away from home and away from the workplace. Just keep keep them away. Inviting them in never does you any favors. Just just don't. Uh, and the second villain that he has to deal with is actually working with the Mandarin behind the scenes, and that is Aldrich Killian, played by Guy Pierce, who is awesome in this movie, uh, and essentially has to play do two different characters, although. They are technically the same person, just from different time periods. Because we first meet Killian in a flashback to 1999, and then we meet him later in the present day. For a second, I almost didn't realize it was the same actor. Uh, you know, not only because of his appearance, but because of his entire attitude. It's just complete night and day. And I think that really speaks to Guy Pierce's versatility as an actor, uh, that he can, you know play this one character in two completely different attitudes uh, and have them both be very convincing uh, really works well. And uh, the character Killian has basically created a virus that he calls Extremis, I think that's what it was, which he uses to breed a new brand of super soldier, which are basically like, they look like these half man, half fire type creature. That's the best way I can describe it. They look really cool. Uh, I like what they did with them, and they're, you know, super strong. They they have these kind of fire-related powers and also very extreme regeneration. Uh, kind of like Wolverine, except with some much nastier side effects. Um, so, as if that wasn't enough between the Mandarin and Killian, Tony Stark also has to go up against himself, really, because he is a broken man after the events of the Avengers. He is having trouble sleeping. On the rare moments when he does get some sleep, he is haunted by these nightmares uh, and has nasty panic attacks. Uh, and pretty much this all stems from what happened at the end of the Avengers, where he almost died. Uh, clinically, I guess he was dead until the hor- uh, the- the hork? <laughs> That's not right. That's that's that cheap knockoff, the Incredible Hork. No, <laughs> no until the Hulk basically just kind of roared him back to life. Uh, but yeah, since then, he has not been himself at all. And although, I mean, he still is the snarky bastard we all know and love, but definitely living on edge through this entire movie and struggling to overcome his personal demons as well as the new villains of the month. Uh... And he does this very well. Robert Downey Jr. has definitely not lost his touch. He is as awesome as he always was. And um, I did like that he spent a good chunk of this movie having to deal with all of these problems without the Iron Man suit. He basically had to go on his own and just rely on his own ingenuity to overcome all of these obstacles that are in his way. Uh, there's a point where he's basically stranded in the middle of uh, nowhere, Tennessee, and he technically does have his suit, but it's damaged completely beyond, not entirely beyond repair, but it's, you know, beyond usefulness. It's out of action, so he just has to rely on his own ingenuity and actually does build a few more gadgets from scratch, uh, 
Although instead of doing so with a box of scrap in a cave, he does it with whatever he can find at the local Home Depot, which was uh, kind of a fun scene, actually, to see how he put all these gadgets together. Uh, that, that was fun. And also, while he's there, there's another character I want to mention. Uh, he befriends isn't really the right word. He is reluctantly forced to work with a kid named Harley, played by... What was the actor's name? Is it Ty, Ty Simpkins, who I've never seen until this movie, but he is a really good child actor. And, you know, a lot of times whenever you see a superhero teaming up with a kid, it comes off as incredibly lame. Not the case here. I liked how they played off of each other, uh, but especially with the back-and-forth dialogue they go through. There's a point where uh, Harley is kind of trying to guilt-trip him. He's like, you know, my dad walked out on me years ago. Are you going to walk out on me too? And, of course, Tony's like, yes. Yes, I am. Don't be a pussy about it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I love the way those two characters worked off each other. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of Ty Simpkins because, you know, if he can act this good as a kid, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, and, yeah, as far as stuff that I didn't like, um, there was a bit in the final battle that I thought was kind of dumb because... Uh, uh, Colonel Rhodes, a.k.a. War Machine, is also there, once again played by Don Cheadle. And uh, when Tony brings in all of his suits, uh, at, the, at that moment, uh, Colonel Rhodes does not have his War Machine suit with him, for reasons I won't get into to avoid spoilers. But he's like, all right, Tony, give me a suit. I'm ready to go. And Tony's like, oh, sorry, they're all coded for me. Can't do that. And I thought, well, that was kind of a lame excuse to not include War Machine in the final battle. But that's really the best you could come up with. Why have him there in the first place? You know, and if you're going to have him there, let him do something. And, and I, he kind of does, but, but still, that, that was kind of lame, I thought. Um, I also kind of took issue with the, uh, the way they handled the extremist soldiers in terms of how you're supposed to kill them. Because there is one moment where they make it pretty clear that destroying their heart will kill them. Uh, and normally they're not very easy to kill because they can regenerate. Um, even to the point of regenerating lost limbs. But you would think a pretty big explosion would be enough to take out their heart, and yet sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, and it's not really clear why. Uh, a little more consistency there would have helped, I think. Um, and one more thing that didn't bother me personally, but I'm sure it will bother a lot of people, there is a twist later on in the movie involving the Mandarin. Uh, I'm not going to give it away, but I will say, judging by what I've read about the Mandarin character online, a lot of comic book purists are probably not going to be too happy with this. There will be some nerd raging going on. I've, I've seen some nerd raging online over this, actually. So, if you are a comic purist, just be ready for that. You're probably not going to like it. Uh, if you're not, then you'll probably be okay with it. I didn't have a problem with it personally. I thought it was okay. Uh, maybe not the best route they could have gone, but it worked for me. Uh, I think that's about all I have to say. Uh, if you are a fan of superhero movies, and if you've liked the previous Iron Man movies, then this is definitely something you want to see. Uh, and again, don't see it in 3D. Save your money. So that's about it. Iron Man 3 gets a thumbs up, and I will see you later. I'm gonna offer the choice. Do you want an empty life? a meaningful death. You're not a man. You're nothing more than a maniac. I'm not afraid of you. No politics here. Just good old-fashioned revenge.